Our learning targets for today include, I can describe the three dimensions impact on text complexity. I can evaluate a text to inform my instruction and support student learning. The standards define a three-part model for determining how easy or how difficult a particular text is to read, as well as grade-by-grade -grade specifications for increasing text complexity in successive years of schooling. These are to be used together with grade-specific standards that require increasing sophistication in students' reading comprehension ability. There are three equally important parts or dimensions which include quantitative, qualitative, reader and task. These dimensions make up the requirements of grade-level text complexity bands. Text complexity in the standards is defined in the following grade bands, 2-3, 4-5, 6-8, 9-10, and 11 through college and career ready. Students in the first year of a given band are expected by the end of the year to read and comprehend proficiently within the band, with scaffolding as needed at the high end of the range. Students in the last year of the band are expected by the end of the year to read and comprehend independently and proficiently within the band. But what makes data quantitative? In regard to the quantitative dimension of text complexity, the text is assigned some number, given a reading level. This is generally generated via a readability formula such as Rager, Flesh Kincaid, Fry, or Lexile. Readability. Most equate text complexity with readability. This is defined as the ease of comprehension because of the style of writing, the quality and clarity of a piece of written work, that is, writing that can be understood by those and for whom it is written, a balance between the reader's skill and the text itself, according to Fisher, Fry, and Lapp in 2012. But we simply must not confuse readability with reading ability. One important aspect of determining the quantitative readability is word length. Length suggests the degree to which a reader must decode the word, a single syllable versus a polysyllabic term. Frequency supposes its potential familiarity to the reader. The more often it occurs, the more likely it will be simpler. Also, the context in which a word appears can increase its difficulty. Sentence length. Sentence length involves syntactic and semantic demands on a reader such as prepositional phrases, dependent clauses, adjectives, and adverbs. These press a reader's working memory as a multitude of concepts and connections must be kept in mind. See Kinch, 1974. The definition of a readability formula is an objective measure of the ease of difficulty of a text that is based on characteristics of the text itself. Typically, the considerations are vocabulary difficulty and syntactic complexity. These are measured through two lenses, word length and sentence length. It usually, not always, but usually yields a grade-level equivalent. Flesh Kincaid. Well, here's how it works. It gives you two scores. The first is the reading ease, which is provided as a regular number on a scale of 1 to 100. Higher is better. A score of around 65 is a good target for most business writing. The second is a grade level equivalent. This indicates in which school year you'd need to be to understand it. For grade level 7, someone in 7th grade or between 12 and 13 years old could probably understand it. Rager Readability Formula was devised by Alton Rager in 1977. He designed it specifically for middle and secondary level reading material. It is proven to be more reliable than the Fry readability graph as it counts word length of six letters or more as opposed to syllables. It also takes into account the number of sentences that are involved in a chunk of writing that is 100 words long. Here's an example of the Rager readability estimate graph. As you can see, your axes include average word length and average sentence length. Plot the point for the intersection of both to determine the approximate grade level. Now you see a sample of a passage from Seed Folks, one of three that are included here. Note in passage A here, the underlying words represent those that are six letters or more, and the total number of sentences that are counted, including any fraction, for example, 3.5, 5.2.
Here is an example uh, with passage B. Again, note the underlined words as they represent those that are six letters or more, and again, the total number of sentences that are counted included any fraction. Finally, as regular readability requires three 100-word chunks, we see passage C from Seed Folks. And again, note the underlined words that represent those that are six letters or more, and the total number of sentences that are counted, including any fraction. Here's the table for the data from the three passages. For both words and sentences, passages A, B, and C are added, and then divided by three, which is, allows us to plot the score on the graph. Using the regular readability estimate graph, average word length and average sentence length, we can now see that seed folks looks quantitatively equivalent to fifth grade. Most would say it is a fifth grade readability. So how do we use Rager and what are the things to keep in mind when quantitatively scoring a text using the Rager readability estimate? Step one, passages. First, count out three 100-word passages. Oftentimes, this is best done at the beginning, middle, and end of a text, or the beginning, middle, and end of a chapter, beginning, middle, and end of a short story. Don't count any numerals unless they are written out as numbers. For example, not for 3, but 40 hyphen 3. Rigor is an average of the three passages. You can do a quick count conducted on one passage, but it is guaranteed to be less accurate. Step 2, count the sentences. So, determine the number of sentences in each 100-word passage. If the 100-word limit breaks a sentence in half, count all the words in that sentence, then estimate how many tenths of the sentence are used in that 100-word count? We saw this in Seed Folks, the examples earlier. For instance, if there were 15 words in the entire sentence and only 7 were part of the 100-word count, the estimate might be 0.5, that is 7 out of 15 equaling 0.46, round up to 0.5. Now let's address word count. Underline or highlight or circle the words with 6 or more letters in the passage. From time to time, I've had trouble differentiating five letters in a word versus six letters in a word, so do use caution as words like moves or power are five, but power would qualify. Include names and proper nouns. Do not include numbers unless they are spelled out. Now, count the total number of underlined words, six letters or more, found in the passage. Now let's plot our totals. First, Find the average number of sentences in the passage on the vertical axis. Locate the average number of words with six or more letters on the horizontal axis. Plot the intersection of sentences and words on the graph to arrive at a grade level designation. Note, the grade level is only valid within the parallelish lines. If your point is plotted in the top left area of the grid or the bottom right outside the parallel lines, your total is invalid for the purposes of this estimate.